When your baby pulls on her or his ears or is fussy and crying and you don't quite know what to do, well, there are things that you could look for. Here's more. Well, taking your little ones to the doctor, chances are it's because of an ear infection. And for kids who frequently get ear infections, ear tubes can help. Here to talk with us today is Dr. Anton Milo, an ear, nose, and throat specialist with Akron Children's Hospital. He's got some insights for parents on ear infections and ear tubes. He knows a couple things. Hi, doctor. Hi, thank you for having me. So why, why? Because I mean, I'm like every other mom you've ever talked to. My son has had the ear tubes. He had chronic ear infections. Why does this happen? Well, probably the biggest reason is the anatomic change between adults and children. In children, their eustachian tubes are horizontal and more immature. And every time you speak and swallow and yawn, that tube should be open and letting air get in that space to keep your ears healthy. Well, they can't do that. So you get an infection. Infection can cause fluid, which makes the children fussy, can cause uh, infection, you know, the fluid can become infected. So they can be uh, febrile, get a fever, fussy sleepers, poor appetite, and that can lead you to the pediatrician who diagnoses an ear infection, and oftentimes they treat it with an antibiotic, and that cures many of the children. Yeah, I think I was probably at, I think my son, between like six and 12 months, had like four or six ear infections. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. And so at what point do parents go, okay, this isn't right, I need to go see an ENT? Well, well, in those children that don't respond to the pediatrician's medication, uh, if you have multiple bouts of ear infection, and you're still not responding to the medication, then you're often referred to the ear, nose, and throat specialist. And there's also a subset of children. I always remind parents when I see them that it's good to focus on the person, not just the problem. Because if your child has persistent fluid as well, then they're not going to hear properly. And a child that can't hear doesn't learn to speak. You know, input equals output. So you don't want to miss the forest for the tree. So those children also can be candidates for ear tubes as well. So ear tubes, tell us, what are they? Now, obviously, I'm a mom that speaks from experience, but there's a lot of new moms. They don't know that they're gonna, their kid's going to need it. What are they? How do they work? Okay, well, they're literally like they sound. They're a small one or two millimeter tube, and we use a microscope to place them across the eardrum because what they really do is they bypass that immature functioning eustachian tube and allow those ears, those eustachian tubes to grow and mature, and then... As the ears get healthy, they'll slowly have those tubes extrude, and then many children outgrow their problem. And I think, I'm sure you've seen plenty of this, like, it's the moms. <laughs> and it's the moms who are freaking out. Oh, my kid's going to have surgery. But, right. like, it's actually a really minor procedure. I'm sure you can put everybody to rest. Right, right. Yeah. And let's face it, every surgery is serious. And I always remind parents, if you have a child, the best place to take your child is a children's hospital. Numerous studies show that that's the best, safest place to be. Everybody there, every day of their life focuses on treating children. Anesthesia knows the right dose, the right medicine to give children for their anesthetic because those children do require brief anesthetic to have that procedure done. It's like 10 or 15 minute procedure. Uh, no breathing tube, just the mask. And we have child life specialists and other people that help put the families of children at ease as they go through that process. But you come in that day, we drain the fluid, we, you have your tubes placed, you go home later that day, and you're pretty much back to yourself. It, it's a very a uh, relatively simple procedure, actually one of the most common pediatric surgeries in the country. Yeah, I always, when my other girlfriends who came after me with their young babies, I was like, look, it's way harder on you than it is on the baby. Trust yeah. me, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> and then what happens to the ear tube? So the baby grows up and then what happens to those ear tubes? Are they always in there? No, I'll, I'll, basically it's a foreign body when you think about it. It's a silicone tube and it has to sit there for at least six to 12 months. A year is the average for most children. And again, that's letting those eustachian tubes grow and mature. As they're doing that, the eardrums are slowly pushing those tubes out. And one day, either you'll check it during a six month visit or your pediatrician sees it and it's gone, or it's sitting in the ear kind of a little bit of wax and you clean it out. And that's how 80% of children will outgrow their ear difficulties. Dr. Milo, this is great information for all parents, especially if your kid needs ear tubes. Uh, you can call 330. 543-1000 and online it's akronchildrens.org. Thanks, Dr. Milo. Thank you for having me.